In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about creating whip pan transitions. Hey guys, Ross from Flatpak FX here, and in this video I want to share with you exactly how I go about shooting my whip pans. Now before we start editing our whip pans, we need to make sure that we have the right footage. Now good whip pans are actually shot in camera and not made in the computer. Now filming whip pans is actually really easy and all you need to do when actually filming is with your camera just either at the beginning or the end of your shot, just turn the camera quickly to the right or the left. Now as a rule of thumb, I always like to give myself an in and out transition on everything that I film. So if I'm starting my shot and I wanted to film here, I'm going to start by quickly panning in my camera from say the left hand side, then I'll film a bit of my shot and then I'm going to film quickly by spinning my camera out to the right. Now the thing to also keep in mind, if you know the order of your shots, try and line up your shots so one panning out lines up with the next one panning in. So if I finish my shot panning out on the right, I want to start my next shot by panning in from the left. Now here's the actual raw examples of how I've actually filmed these shots to show you exactly how I've gone about filming them. Now it's really important that you get this right in the first place because it's really difficult to recreate this afterwards. Now once you've filmed all your footage, you're ready to jump over to Premiere and actually create the transition. Now just before we move on, I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one, so if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. So over in Premiere, you can see that I've already created my edit here of my whip pan transitions. Now again, you can see that it's really important that I'm transitioning out on one direction on one shot, and then transitioning in on a new direction on the second shot. Now, as I mentioned before, if you film all of your video clips with an in and out transition, you've always got that option of either using panning in from the left or panning out from the right. Now, the other good thing about doing it that way is that you can even reverse your shots. So you can say pan in from the right and pan out from the left. Now, I've actually done that with a few of these shots and I wanna show you exactly how I do that. Now, I've imported all my clips down here and I want to double click and select the first part of the video that I'm going to import. So I want to use this part of the whip pan. And what I'm actually then going to do is just right click on that and say new sequence from clip. Now, I can just just delete the bottom part of my video here and I'm going to zoom in on the timeline so I can better see what I'm actually doing. Now the best thing about shooting whip pans in camera is that you don't actually have to do a lot in the editor to get the effect to look good. It's about choosing the right two shots that go together. So in this example, I've got my shot here and what I actually want to do, you can see that I've already got great motion blur that I've shot in camera. So when I'm about halfway through this transition here of this whip pan, I just want to create a straight cut. I'm just gonna drag the end of my frame in here so it ends right there. Then I'm ready to grab my next shot. Now here you can see that as I was talking about before, I don't have a transition in on this shot here. I've only got a transition out. So what I'm actually going to do is actually reverse this shot. So I'm just gonna create an in point and an out point here, and then just drag that video file onto my timeline. Now what I want to do with this clip is I'm actually going to reverse it so that we get the whip pan actually coming in at the start. So I just right click on this clip, I just come up to speed and duration and I hit reverse speed. And that's going to reverse that clip. Now what I want to do again, I want to line up so my transition is about halfway through when it's most blurry. 
and then I'm just going to bring the end of this clip in to speed it up. Now the best thing about this is because you've shot it with a lot of motion blur, it's naturally just going to transition between those two shots. So you can see, I don't actually have to do anything to it. It's just going to look like it's one seamless transition. Now, as an example, if you'd film this clip and it didn't have a lot of motion blur already in it, what we can actually do is create a bit more of a transition or a fade transition to help those two clips better line up together. So what I'd actually do is I'd bring this second clip over a bit and extend it out very slightly. And all I'm going to do is actually bring this first clip up and bring my second clip underneath. Then with my first clip select, I'm just gonna find the part where it actually starts transitioning in, so somewhere about here. And I wanna come over to the effects controls and create an opacity keyframe. And all we're simply going to do is create a very basic fade out. Then I can just adjust the timing of my second clip here. Now when I actually play through, you can see that we get a lot smoother transition between those two clips. Now you could also further exaggerate this by actually using a speed ramp, which is where you actually make it go quicker over that transition and then slow down during the main part of your shot. But let's just have a look at another example here. Now here I've actually got a shot where I transition in and then I transition out. So I'm going to select the first part here and then create an out point here and just drag this, and then just drag this onto my timeline. Then I'm going to grab my second clip here, which is of this cave, and actually drag that in afterwards and line that up in the same way. Now when I actually play through this, you can see that it just transitions seamlessly between those two clips. Now this is another really good example here of where you're actually starting to choose two shots that are going to transition together. Now I've used these two clips to demonstrate another principle of how I actually go about choosing the two shots that I'm going to transition together. And that is you probably would have noticed that I've shot these both as kind of a silhouette. So we've got something in the main background which is light and off to the side where we're transitioning into is dark. And on my second clip here, you can see that I start with something dark and transition into something light. So this is just something you want to keep in mind when you're actually filming your two shots and editing them together. You want to think about cutting similar shots together to get the best possible transition. So there you go, guys. I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.